On April 27, 2019, a 300-foot-tall tower crane didn't just fall. It shattered across one of Seattle's busiest streets. Initial news reports pointed to a sudden, violent gust of wind as the culprit, another tragic case of man versus nature. But the wind wasn't the cause, it was merely the executioner. The real reason for the collapse was found not in the weather forecast, but in a series of decisions made hours earlier. A shortcut, a deviation from the manual designed to save time. A choice that would result in four deaths and a financial fallout beyond $200 million. This is Hard Hat Industries, where heavy machinery shapes the world. To understand this failure, you first have to understand the machine. The crane was a Liebherr Tower Crane, a German-engineered workhorse of high-rise construction across the globe. A tower crane is a semi-permanent fixture on a job site, assembled piece by piece, growing with the building it constructs. With its 262-foot jib, this particular crane could command a massive radius, lifting materials with surgical precision. Its maximum lifting capacity is 32 metric tons, that's about 70,000 pounds, placing steel and concrete with an accuracy measured in millimeters. A machine like this represents an investment of around two to three million dollars and it is the absolute backbone of vertical construction. Its design is a masterclass in balancing immense forces. The vertical mast, the horizontal jib, and the concrete counterweights are all locked in a constant, delicate dance with gravity. Every single pin, sleeve, and weld is engineered to withstand the colossal stresses of lifting tons of material hundreds of feet in the air. These machines build our modern world. They are symbols of progress, standing silent vigil over our cities. But a tower crane's greatest vulnerability isn't when it's lifting, but when it's being taken apart. It is only as strong as the pins and sleeves that hold it together and the discipline of the crew tasked with removing them. What happens when that discipline fails? This is the core of the Seattle tragedy. It was not an accident in the sense of an unforeseen event. It was the predictable, fatal outcome of a procedural violation. The crane was being dismantled. This is arguably the most dangerous phase of a tower crane's life. The process is a reverse of its assembly. Methodical, slow, and precise. Crews ascend the mast and, using a smaller derrick, remove the jib and tower sections one by one, securing everything before moving to the next piece. The procedure for connecting these massive steel sections relies on dozens of high-strength steel pins and sleeves. The manual is unequivocal. Pins are only to be removed from the specific section being actively dismantled. But on that Saturday, the crew from Northwest Tower Crane Service was working against the clock. A forecast for high winds the next day put them under pressure to finish the job quickly. So, they took a shortcut. To speed up the process, they removed nearly all the pins and sleeves connecting multiple sections of the tower mast far in advance. They left just a few pins in place, intending to remove them later as each piece was lifted away. For a period of time, the entire 204 metric ton upper assembly of the crane was held together by a fraction of its intended structural support. It was balanced, but critically unstable. Then, the weather turned faster than expected. At 3.30 p.m., a squall line moved in hitting the site with a wind gust measured at 48 miles per hour. For a fully secured crane, this would have been a non-event, but for the critically weakened structure, it was a death blow. The lateral force of the wind slammed into the sail of the jib, overwhelming the few remaining connection points. With a sound described as a series of gunshots, the steel pins failed. The entire upper assembly tore free, plummeting 300 feet to the street below. The immense whiplash of this failure then caused the upper sections of the tower mast itself to buckle and collapse in the opposite direction. 
It fell across six lanes of traffic on Mercer Street and smashed into the side of the new Google campus building it had helped construct. It was a failure born of haste and paid for in human lives. Was the pressure to beat the weather worth the risk that was taken? The question left hanging in the Seattle sky is not just how the crane fell, but why a veteran crew would take such a fundamental and devastating risk. The answer is not found in a single decision, but in the powerful underlying culture of high-rise construction itself, the unyielding pressure of the clock. The iron workers who assemble and dismantle these steel giants are among the most skilled and courageous tradespeople in the world. Their job exists in a realm of calculated risk, hundreds of feet in the air where there is no margin for error. They are a brotherhood defined by precision, strength, and an unwavering focus on the task at hand. However, on any multi-million dollar project, that task is inextricably linked to a schedule. A single day lost to bad weather is not just a delay, it's a direct hit to the project's bottom line, costing tens of thousands of dollars in idle equipment and labor. This creates a relentless top-down pressure to stay ahead, to beat the forecast, to get the job done. This environment can foster a dangerous phenomenon known as the normalization of deviance. When a highly experienced crew performs a complex task repeatedly, small deviations from the official procedure can begin to seem like efficiencies. A shortcut taken once without incident becomes easier to take a second time. Over time, these minor violations of the rulebook can become an accepted, informal part of the process, until a variable, like a 48 mile per hour gust of wind, exposes the hidden danger. This wasn't a crew of rookies. It was their very experience and confidence in their abilities that likely created a tragic blind spot. The decision to pull those pins, driven by the crew's experienced foreman, was not born of carelessness, but of a misplaced faith that they could control a risk the engineering manual expressly forbids. It was a gamble made in a world where time is the most expensive commodity of all. Before we calculate the final cost, we must acknowledge the human toll. Four lives were lost. Andrew Yoder and Travis Corbett, highly respected iron workers, were dismantling the crane they trusted with their lives. Sarah Wong, a freshman university student brimming with promise, and Alan Justad, a former city planning official who shaped Seattle's skyline, were simply driving below. Their loss is the immeasurable heart of this disaster, a wound that no dollar figure can heal. Yet the financial fallout, staggering in its scope, tells its own story of devastation. Our estimate, approaching $200 million, or more when the full ripple effects are tallied, is a chilling measure of that single shortcut's cascade. First, the asset itself. The Liebherr tower crane, a two to three million dollar machine, was reduced to scrap metal, a twisted monument to haste. Second, the cleanup and direct damage. The collapse paralyzed a major artery of a major American city, clearing tons of mangled steel from buildings and a public street alongside structural repairs to the Google building and Mercer Street's roadway consumed 10 to 20 million dollars in complex, urgent work. Third, the project delays. The multi-million dollar South Lake Union Commons construction project froze inside a sealed off investigation zone. Idle crews, dormant equipment, and contractual penalties racked up 25 to 50 million dollars over months of disruption, as Google scrambled to contain losses for thousands of workers and tenants. Finally, and most crushingly, the legal reckoning. The Washington State Department of Labor and Industries levied $107,200 in fines against the companies involved. But the civil lawsuits defined the true cost. Families of the four victims, alongside others injured on the ground, sued the crane owner, Morrow Equipment, and other firms. In 2022, a jury found them negligent, assigning $150 million in damages. $112 million to victims' families, with Morrow's separate settlements pushing the total past $150 million. 
when insurance payouts, soaring premiums and hidden costs like traffic disruptions and lost contracts are added, the economic toll climbs beyond $200 million. It stands as a brutal reminder that a shortcut on the job site doesn't just risk lives, it risks financial ruin. The investigation by Washington's L and I confirmed there was no machine malfunction. The crane performed exactly as designed. The fault lay exclusively with the disassembly procedure. The final report concluded that the primary cause was the premature removal of tower pins and sleeves, a clear-cut case of human error, driven by a rushed schedule. This incident didn't just create headlines, it created laws. The collapse exposed a critical regulatory loophole within Washington state-run OSHA plan. While operators required extensive certification, disassembly crews often did not. In response, the state legislature passed Senate Bill 5693 in 2020. The new law mandated state-level certification and training standards for all personnel involved in tower crane assembly and disassembly requiring companies to submit detailed plans for state review. From the tragedy, a tangible systemic change was born, a hope that stricter oversight could prevent a similar failure. The industry was reminded that safety procedures are not guidelines. They are ironclad rules written from the lessons of past failures. We began by saying the wind wasn't the cause. It was simply the force that exposed a fatal, man-made flaw. The shortcuts taken that day created a structure so fragile that a common gust of wind could bring it down. The new laws are a testament to the four lives lost, but the lingering question for every site supervisor remains. Can any regulation truly eliminate the pressures of the clock? The Seattle crane collapse was a devastating lesson in procedural discipline. A series of shortcuts taken to get ahead of a storm left a 300-foot Liebherr tower crane so vulnerable that a 48-mile-per-hour wind gust triggered its complete failure. A mistake that cost four lives, beyond $200 million, and forced an entire state to rewrite its laws on crane safety. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.